Okay. Again, I'm going to repeat what Mr. Mekani said. Hello and welcome everyone to this uh, Python conference. Also welcome to my presentation about Python and AWS Lambda. And as the subtitle says, I'm going to try to make it a practical guide on how to do things with, with AWS Lambda and with Python running on it as well. Um, so this is the agenda for today. I'm uh, not going to try to take too much of your time, so just a little bit about me. Uh, then we will dive into the whole uh, platform as a service or software as a service versus the whole serverless movement that's been happening in the world since maybe 2016 or something like that. And after that comes the, the good stuff. After that comes the meat of this presentation, which is AWS Lambda. And if you ever um, visit, if you ever attended any of my uh, presentations, you uh, know that I like to include some demos. Unfortunately, 100% of the time, these demos work 60% of the time. So I'm going to cross my fingers for, for today. I may not going to need uh, some of your fingers as well for this. And we will conclude with the uh, Q&A as you all know. Okay. Very thirsty. It's too hot. Okay. A little bit about me, but time is, is short. So I am a system engineer at Bestseller e-commerce. Um, you never probably never heard about us, but we uh, sell clothes online, mostly brands like Jack and Jones, uh, Veromoda only, etc., etc. I do work in a fashion company, but I don't dress as such. So yay, Python all the way. Which makes sense because I really do like Python and if you want to connect with me or hit me up or whatever, just visit the URL that is uh, shown here. So, you want to run applications, but you don't want to manage infrastructure, right? The holy grail. Well, turns out that this has been possible for a really long time. So, there have been many successful companies that have platform as a service, or software as a service offerings. Um, most of the time, these do work well, but not really always. What's good about it is that uh, some of them are uh, hosted online, or as they like to say, in the cloud. Some of them you can also host yourself, such as OpenShift. But are they the silver bullet? Will they let you run your applications without really thinking about infrastructure? What do you think? I misclicked, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's something in this water. I don't know what it is. No, because it's a black box. You really have no idea what's running there. There may be databases, there may be caching, there may be whatever, but you can't do anything about it because someone else manages it. If you want to scale, it's limited. It may not be limited, but it's pricey. So again, you cannot scale. If there is uh, API, it's probably crappy, unfinished, uh, support is slow, but to be honest, this is only based on my experience with Salesforce because this is what we use in bestseller, don't, don't tell anyone. Again, did I say it's a, it's a black box? You have no idea because you need this API call to work or your manager wants to hook up some BI solution to just gather all the data and crunch and munch and blah, 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 but you cannot do it. And then your manager says, it's your fault. Well, okay, I told you it's a black box. So, is Lambda the silver bullet? Is Lambda the holy grail? Will Lambda let you <sighs> run <laughs> applications without managing inf infrastructure? Well, both yes and no, because yeah, it's serverless, it's hosted somewhere else. You don't have to worry about it, but Lambda is gonna be the same kind of silver bullet such as these technologies. I don't know if you like MongoDB, I think it's cool. And there was a time when, when people thought that, yeah, I'm just gonna hook up MongoDB to my slow, crappy application and it's gonna fix everything. Did it fix every everything? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it most probably did not because if you don't model your data and if you cannot write queries that are efficient, no technology is gonna help you, not even MongoDB. You all know this little guy, right? Super cool. Yes, as well. But did it fix everything? Exactly, because if your application is not really written to be resilient, 
to run on Docker, to run on Kubernetes or wherever, it's not going to help you. It's just going to be another layer that you need to worry about, that you need to manage, fix. Also, database backups. They are cool, you should have them, but they're not the silver bullet because if you don't test these backups, if you don't restore them and verify the integrity of them, not going to work. It's crap, right? You may, be, you may have backups from 2005, but who cares if they don't work? So, <sighs> Her Majesty Lambda. I've been telling you a lot what Lambda is not, or not really telling about Lambda at all. So, what is Lambda? Lambda is a service from AWS, our good lords of the cloud, and it lets you run functions, just really functions, without thinking about servers. Some people like to call it function as a service, but I think it's this whole as a service is kind of boring and crappy, even though I use three terms already. But what is cool about Lambda, at least that's what I think, is that you only pay for the capacity that you use. So when your functions don't run, you don't pay anything. It's just there, sitting idly, and it's cheap. So, uh, but when your functions do run, uh, what they, uh, what good guys at AWS like to do is they uh, bill you on the sub-second, sorry, they bill you on the on on, on milliseconds, uh, rounding up to the closest 100 milliseconds. So, for example, if your function runs for 780 milliseconds, you're going to be billed for 800, which is also super cool. Um, I may forgotten, I may have forgotten to say, but uh, Lambda is super scalable. When I say super. It means that for every request, there's going to be a new function, new function spawned, a new function taking load on it. And you don't really have to think about scaling, but also you might think about downscaling because this super scaling may be a bad thing. And I'm going to come to that later on. So does it, does it sound cool to you? At least. No one. The best, yes. What my physics uh, professor used to say is, if they're silent, they agree. So just keep them silent. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I also think that Lambda sounds cool, but it will definitely run. It will not run by itself. So something needs to needs to trigger it. It responds to uh, either requests or events from other services, and the good guys at AWS. Uh, really uh, went out of their way to make it connect with everything. So you can trigger your Lambda functions from S3, which is the storage service. We can also trigger your Lambda by uh, the API gateway, so you can build nice uh, little APIs that scale massively. Um, you can also trigger it by message sources, such as SNS, SES, or SQS, meaning that your Lambdas can be triggered by emails received, or by messages in the queue, or by whatever. So you can Definitely mix and match many of these services, combine it with Lambda, combine Lambdas with other Lambdas, and create huge pipelines, massive things. Uh, the good guys at AWS will also be very happy about it because they charge you for all of it, but hey, you get, you get to say, I'm using Lambda, I'm super cool. Okay, um, some of the use cases that I uh, found on the internet or, or in my head um, are just listed here. Uh, nothing too, nothing too uh, complicated. But for example, you can you can combine S3 with Lambda, and for example, you can resize images as soon as someone uploads them in a specific bucket, or you can do some uh, thumbnail generation. Also, you can uh, let's say combine CloudWatch with Lambda, and then you can make uh, your own smart monitoring by uh, Lambda functions, just following logs, and if some exception happened. It's going to trigger something, something, and then send you a message and wake you up. Then you're going to be like, crap, this again. I did not configure it correctly. Yeah, it can do it. Um, sorry. One other example that I heard of, and it's a company that's been acquired recently, so they got fat stacks of money. So there's a company in the Netherlands, and it sounds stupid, but people actually pay money for someone to create your uh, photo albums. So what you do, you go on their website, you pay some amount of money, I don't know how much does it cost, and you upload your photos. Yay! And then what they have is they have machine learning uh, mastery inside science, I don't know what it is, um, which picks your best photos and arranges them in a photo album, 
and it's all done with S3 and Lambda. And they have been, in the past year, they have been acquired by, I don't know which company, and they had 2,000% of growth. And Lambda just does it. It's six people. It's six people. It, and it just works. And one of the numbers that they like to uh, brag about is that they get uploaded, so 100 million photos gets uploaded every day to their service. And it just works. Yep. Okay. What you also can do with Lambda is you can create the, uh, the holy grail of 2004 or whatever, is the three-tier web application with database, downstairs in the basement or whatever, your Lambda functions having the business logic in them, an API gateway just being the endpoint from where your UI connects or whatnot, and also static files can be served from S3 and cloud CloudFront uh, respectively. So yeah. All of this is still sounds cool, but Colco para. <laughs> well, as I said, you only pay for what you use. And there's no idle capacity. You can have 10 million functions. If no one uses them, it's still zero. Also, uh, good guys at AWS are giving 1 million requests to your functions for free. Also, 400,000 gigabyte seconds. And a gigabyte second is something that they came up with completely. And it's the, um, it's the number that you get when, when you multiply the memory that is assigned to your function uh, by its duration. So I would say it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, or we, as we like to say in Serbian, it's not going to cost Boga Hoca. <laughs> and for example, if your function uses 512 megs of RAM, so this is just a function. This is not a VM, so just think how huge or how inefficient a function needs to be to consume 512 megs of RAM. And if you execute it one million times, one million, uh, six zeros, one million times, and each run takes three seconds, which is a lot, it's going to cost you $18. 18 bucks. 18 dollars <laughs> for one million executions and each execution takes three seconds. But three seconds is a lot of time. If your function takes three seconds, it's either really uh, big or slow. Yes, there's no, there's no third option. And if you punch all these uh, numbers into a calculator, it's 34 hours of execution. So that's really something, and you get that for $18. Okay. In the beginning, I mentioned a demo, and these are some stats about the demo that I uh, created. Uh, to be honest, it's only a one function. It's pretty inefficient. So for its duration, it's 1.2 something seconds. And uh, I usually get billed for 1.3 seconds. Sorry. It has 128 megs of uh, memory assigned to it, which is the, the bare minimum that you can do. But it only uses 39, so yay! And it costs me nothing. So if you guys just went ahead and just clicked a million times on it, it's not going to cost anything because the good guys at AWS have a lot of free, uh, free requests and free data included in the free tier. OK, so for the practical part, I would say that uh, logging is one of the foundations of, of a good application. You you really want to log, you, you want to be crazy about it, you want to know what's going on. Because when it wakes you up, at 3.35, you don't want to do any archaeology, you don't want to debug, you don't want to be bothered by it, you, you just want to read a line that says, this crapped out, this died. So for logging with Lambda, you can always print. It will just, whatever you print, it will be included into the CloudWatch logs. Or you can use uh, Python's built-in logging using uh, the logging module. Yeah, so all the info and exception and every, else, every other method, it just works. So both of these examples are um, kind of the same, even though the, the right one will uh, give you, I would say, better logs, because it includes a time timestamp. OK, one other thing that you need to do uh, in order to be able to log with Lambda is to give it permission, because the function on itself or the service in on itself cannot do much. So you need to use IAM, which is the AWS service that allows you to grant permissions to other services or users or groups or whatever, 
And by using this, we are, or I am basically allowing my uh, Lambda function to perform all actions on the logs, allowing it to log. Yay! Okay, there are some limits definitely when it comes to Lambda because it is not all powerful, al although it, it is pretty powerful. So the amount of memory that you can allocate to your functions ranges from 128 to 1.5 gigs. Uh, whenever your function runs, and I did not mention this before, uh, it always gets a temporary space of 512 megs, so you can use it as a scratch space. It's going to be deleted afterwards, but you can use it. Uh, the maximum number of threads, I mean, you can all read, it's uh, 1024 threads, and the maximum execution time is five minutes. But again, if your function it runs for five minutes, it's just, you're doing something wrong. Also, concurrent executions is uh, limited to 1,000 per region or per account or something like that. But you would really like to tweak this number because uh, what people can do is, if your uh, function is open, they, they will not DDoS you, but they will uh, incur cost. They will just tap, 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 execute your function and the bill is just going to go up and up and up. So you should really decrease this. Okay, demo time. As I said, almost always fails. <laughs> In the meantime, if the Microsoft buys uh, AWS 2, <laughs> what will you do? What am I going to do? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> but also, they, they do have uh, something similar, right? Uh, there, there's many of these... Uh, function as a service offerings. I think you can do the same thing on Kubernetes, I kubeless or something, maybe not. Either way, so when I um, applied to, to give a talk at this presentation, Maya contacted me and said, okay, well, do you have anything in your uh, presentation that relates to cryptocurrencies or Bitcoins or blockchain or whatever? And I said, no. And then she was super excited. Yay, it's gonna be the conference without ever mentioning the blockchain, so I'm not going to mention the blockchain, even I just said blockchain seven times. <laughs> but for this um, demo, it felt easy, so I just built a cryptocurrency converter. There's, a, of course, a service online that does this, so I just copied everything, including the UI. Theirs is better, but hey. So um, this is just a static file, and it's hosted in S3. It's an HTML file, there's some JavaScript, but Python conference. Um, and there's a Lambda function behind it. So the, the, the JavaScript will just send an Ajax, Ajax request. Lambda function will do something and, of course, return the result. So fingers crossed again. So let me check to convert. I don't know how many. How many Bitcoins do you have? Seven? Eight? Minus three. Minus. Uh, ah, it doesn't allow to go. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's say that you have seven and you want to know how much... I don't know, Bitcoin Cash, it's worth. Oh, works. Yes. That's, that's the 60%. <laughs> someone, someone had their fingers crossed except me. Thank you. Yes. So this demonstration consists of two flows, so to call them. So what I, what I have is I have a CloudWatch trigger, which is basically a cron-like trigger and I also have a Lambda function, and every five minutes this Lambda function gets triggered. It goes to the uh, external API of some crypto market, I don't know which, and it gathers data on how, how each coin is worth, how much each coin is worth, and then saves the data into an S3 bucket, the same one where everything lives. The second part is built in Chalice, and it's, if you never heard of it, Chalice is a really cool thing. It's basically Flask on steroids. It's Flask for AWS Lambda. Looking at code is boring, but I wanted to showcase how, how similar it is to Flask. I mean, you can, you can almost recognize, you can almost import from Flask, you can import app, but here you from Flask import Chalice and create the routes and everything, blah, blah, blah. And this is how the, the second flow of data looks. So you have a browser that connects to an S3 bucket, which shows the HTML and the lovely CSS built by my wife. Thank you. And 
Um, when you trigger this function, it goes to an API gateway, which you have uh, where, where a Lambda function lives behind it. It does some calculation, of course, returns the result, and we get everything shown. So any questions, any remarks, any cabbages to be thrown at me? No? <laughs> Thank you. So based on your experience, this is okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so based on your experience, yep. if you would have to compare or re-implement small REST service in mm -hmm. AWS Lambda, would you go down the path having, for example, one function that routes internally to different endpoints, or would you have multiple Lambda functions with API gateway proxying, and how would you battle compli uh, complications within the space of, uh, have instead of having one single source, now you have seven or n separate functions you have to mm -hmm. deploy separately and manage endpoints and proxying in a totally different space and not in a code base, etc. Do you have experience in that area? What's the best approach, or best okay. practice, whatever? Not, not much experience, to be honest, because we, we use it kind of in, in the company, but not too much. But I would definitely go the API gateway route because uh, it's a managed service. It scales like hell, and you don't have to think about many things such as DDoS. Uh, but again, this company that I uh, mentioned before that does photo albums, they needed something more. They weren't really satisfied with what API Gateway offers. And also, there's another service called Step Functions, which you can uh, imp input some logic into the, the whole flow. And they built their own thing. They, they did exactly what you did, what, what, you, what you asked about. They uh, have a simple Lambda function that then spawns other Lambda functions, scales them based on some input, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, I don't have any, ex any experience with managing this at scale. We have maybe five or ten functions per, per environment, so not much. Many yes, tell it off. Okay, if that's everyone, I really thank you for your time and enjoy the conference. <laughs>